Welcome to the 21st episode of the Motorcycle Industry Council's Symposium Series. Today we'll be receiving an update on the quickly approaching AIM Expo 2023, now less than three months away. And we'll also be taking a close look at Ride With Us, our industry's market expansion initiative. Joining us are Andre Albert, MIC's Director of Marketing and Events, Cinnamon Kearns, MIC's Vice President of Market Expansion and Events, and Jacqueline Peterson, MIC's Vice President of Communications. We'd like to say thank you to DX1 for being a sponsor. In this digital world, you need intuitive software to help your dealership grow, not slow you down. Visit dx1app.com and see why dealers are switching to the only all-in-one dealership management solution. And thank you to ZDMS Dealer Management System for being a sponsor. Power Sports dealers know that taking physical inventory is a painful process, which can take multiple days to complete. Not anymore. Introducing ZDMS RFID Physical Inventory. With ZDMS RFID Physical Inventory, dealers can cycle inventory counts anytime, often in one evening, without disruption to their business. Visit ZDMS.com to register for a demo and see how RFID physical inventory can save you time and money. I'd like to thank everyone again, and we will see you out on the show floor. back at AIM Expo in Las Vegas after a few year hiatus, and we're back. Very successful show for us here in Las Vegas. We look forward to next year already. Uh, definitely going to sign up and come back. We'd like to thank Cinnamon and the team at the AIM Expo for putting the show on. It was uh, well worth our time. Hi, I'm Julianne with JD Power. This is my second year attending AIM Expo. It's really important for us to get in front of the dealers and promote our products. So it's really exciting for us to be out here and we look forward to it every year. This sort of trade show, which is a foundation of the power sports industry, is a great way to keep up with what's happening with dealerships, with the industry in general, and getting a pretty good pulse on the consumer too. What an amazing three days we just had in Las Vegas. Power sports dealers, aftermarket exhibitors, OEMs and media were finally able to reunite and we did it in an epic fashion. Community was the key word as we were finally able to get together after two and a half years. Dealers from all 50 states, Guam, Puerto Rico, and 39 countries got to see products from some of the best brands in the industry. Tucker Power Sports, Lexan, Suzuki, to name a few, came out in full force, showcased their latest models to a highly engaged dealer audience, as well as the media and other power sports professionals. AIM Expo Disruptive Thinking Education Sessions were led by industry leaders and covered everything from the most challenging issues facing dealers today to the electrification of power sports in the future. It's all about thinking differently today for a better outcome tomorrow. Headlining the disruptive thinking sessions with a keynote on Thursday was the greatest of all time, Ricky Carmichael. Hey guys, what's up? Ricky Carmichael here. Glad to be back at AIM Expo after a couple years off. Uh, so great to see all the dealers, all the vendors, and uh, a lot of smiling faces. This is long overdue. I'm excited to be here. So looking forward to a great show. Hopefully everyone has a great time as well. 
The Motorcycle Industry Council talked about its market expansion initiative, Ride With Us, and the importance of developing an inclusive community by focusing on lifestyle to foster the next generation of riders. And of course, we partied like you only can in Las Vegas at the AIM Expo Industry Party, powered by Tucker. The countdown begins to AIM Expo 2023. We'll be right here back in Las Vegas, February 15th through 17th. We cannot wait to see you again. Hi, I'm Jacqueline Peterson. I'm here today with Simon Kearns and Andre Albert to talk about AIM Expo and MIC's market expansion program, Ride With Us. We're pre-recording because Cinnamon and Andre are extremely busy getting AIM Expo 2023 ready. And we had to make sure that we got this information to you. So we pre-recorded. So Cinnamon Andre, hello. Good morning. Thank you. Um, so let's talk about AIM Expo first. Sure. Uh, so coming in the heels of a very successful 2022 AIM Expo, what do you have in store for us for 2023? How do you build on the success of last year? Well, that is obviously the question, right? 2022 was an extremely successful year. It looked a little bit different to what it used to, but a lot of people were looking forward to getting back together and doing business face-to-face -face after some time apart, thanks to the pandemic. So the energy was high, the engagement was high, the conversations people were having around the show were all up top level. So for those that were there, it was an incredible show. So we've got a really good footing to build on for 2023. So essentially what we're gonna do is take all the best parts of 2022, and just build on those and take them into 2023. So things, a couple of things that were different is in 2022, we took our education and put it on the main show floor, which we didn't really know how it would be accepted, but it went down well. It had a lot of MIC symposium type content, had a lot of keynote stuff. One comment we did get was that people missed the classroom style education. So for 2023, we're gonna have both the main stage on the show, on the show floor, and we're also going to bring back the classroom style, edu classroom style education tracks um, outside of the classrooms and in the ballrooms so that people are going to get that day-to-day -day dealership, inner workings kind of classroom stuff from those sessions, as well as the bigger thinking, motivational type of panel conversations that are going to happen on the main stage. Great. So education really is, I think, one of a key component of every conference. Um, so what more, what specifically can you share with us right now about education? So there will be lots of announcements coming out in the next few weeks. Uh, on the disruptive thinking stage, uh, we're excited to have David Savlowitz and Michael Ponton from Competitive Analytics. Uh, they'll actually be doing a couple different sessions on the main stage. Um, we also recently confirmed that we will be having a major distributor panel, so more details to come on that. Stay tuned. Uh, that will be moderated by Tony Gonzalez from Garage Composites. We're always excited to have him at the show. Um, you will see a state of the industry addressed by the MIC board, um, board members. Oh, let me think what else. We have a lot going on in that stage. Uh, the, the MIC Dealer Advisory Council will also be uh, presenting on challenges facing dealers today compared to what they were yesterday and what they're going to look like tomorrow. Uh, so we'll hear from our dealers. Um, and then when we talk about the education sessions or the classroom sessions that Andre mentioned, um, we will have... Uh, a lot of the more traditional uh, topics, as Andre said. Um, so you'll see uh, marketing, mass media is a group that we work with on AIM Expo and market expansion. Uh, they'll be coming in to talk about connecting with your audience, connecting with the community. Uh, we'll have Jim Woodruff talking about the used vehicle inventory and how does that translate to day-to-day -day sales. Uh, we have a lot happening in the classrooms as well. And again, we're finalizing all those, so stay tuned. And the communications department, we are working hard on getting a lot of those announcements out. So it'll be great to do that. You will be busy. <laughs> yes. You will be busy. Um, so getting back to how 2023 is maybe going to look a little different, um, how you're building on what you did last year. Um, I We did an announcement on an e-bike pavilion. And so I would, um, I'm excited about it. I think other people would be as well. So say more. Say more, sure. So yeah, the e-bike pavilion is something we first ran in 2019 in Columbus, Ohio. And it was essentially a, an area on the show floor where all the different e-bike companies were able to exhibit, but we also had an indoor test track uh, so that people could actually get on the product, 
talk to the rep about how it all works and then yet yeah, use it in a real life situation. So we have brought that back uh, for this year, both the, the group of um, exhibitors as well as our indoor test track. And we feel that's super important because the power sports industry has, has taken the e-bike industry under its wing, so to speak. Like they kind of didn't really have a home. Well, their home is power sports. And it makes total sense. A lot of the dealers now are starting to um, stock e-products. Some of the major distributors are going into e-products in, in a big way. Um, so yeah, it makes absolute sense that they're part of our show and we wanted to, to give them a platform um, within our platform to yet yeah, make, make their own, make their home. And I know we have um, an exclusive day on our track. Simon, you have a bit more on that? Uh, so I, I'll be honest, I don't know all the brands that they're bringing in, but Tucker will be using our e-bike demo track exclusively on Wednesday. Uh, I know that there was just a big announcement with Fantic back at ICMA. Um, so they will be there. I know Ubco will be there. So um, Wednesday will be an exclusive Tucker day. And then Thursday and Friday are open to our other e-bike companies, including Cake, Suron, uh, and there are others for sure. And I think that speaks to what I just said there about how e-bike companies are finding their home within power sports for Tucker, one of the major distributors in the country to reserve that test track for an entire day and truly back the e-products they're bringing to the market. That evolution speaks for itself. Yeah. Tucker had a big presence last year and I know that they have plans for this year as well. So would you like to share more about what they have planned? In addition uh, to their track day, and we can. I know they've been trying to share a lot of the information with their uh, vendors and suppliers and dealers uh, directly, but um, they are once again sponsoring our industry party. So it will be the Amexpo industry party powered by Tucker. Um, so that will definitely be a memorable evening to kick off the show. Um, they are also doing rep training. So I know they've been talking about that. They'll be doing that a day or two ahead of the show, or just a day. Um, ahead of the show, and then it'll carry over. And I know they're also doing uh, some media events. I don't know exactly what those activations are, but um, you know, Tucker for us, it's been a great partnership. It's a good platform. Um, they're a great team to work with. Uh, the only thing that makes the show better this year is to have parts on board um, and having them recognize the value of coming to the show and connecting with dealers. Of course, they have their MVP uh, right ahead of us. But for them, recognizing that not everybody can be everywhere, um, they see the value in coming to Las Vegas as well. So we're excited to have them on board, um, along with uh, All Balls Racing Group, uh, Moto Nation, and uh, we have quite a few distributors on the floor this year. That's fantastic. So registrations, yes. how are they looking? Registrations are looking good, and I think... I can kind of link that back to what Cinnamon just said about having Tucker Power Sports and both Drag uh, drag Specialties and Parts Unlimited coming back to the show this year. One of the number one reasons dealers come to the show is to meet with their distributor. So because we have two out of the three major distributors coming to the show, obviously our registrations are up. At just under 100 days to the show, we're at the highest regist dealer registrations that we've ever been at. And the cool thing about that is is that we haven't even hit our spike yet. Essentially, the last 30 days is when the trajectory truly dials up and almost goes 90 degrees up. So yeah, we're, we're in a really solid trajectory right now, and it's just gonna get better as we get closer to the show. So yeah, dealer registrations are solid, and yeah, we're excited about it. Yeah, and I think the other thing that ties into that, though, is the exhibitors that we have on the show floor. So we are, last year, we were at almost 200 exhibitors, just under, and we actually, three months out, have more exhibitors than we had last year when we, you know, finished the show. So I think that it's all coming together and, you know, really shaping up to be very successful for our industry, because that's really what we're about. We're the industry's show, and that's something we talk about all the time, is this is your show. This is your show, you should be there, <laughs> whether it's an, as an exhibitor or as an attendee. You know, we talk about the need to come together and connect, engage, unite. And, you know, I think we're seeing that traction, especially post pandemic, which I know that was, you know, over a year and a half ago, but, you know, the effects are still lingering. And I think that um, our industry, though, is still ready to come back uh, stronger and more excited than before. Right. And I think it's also strong registrations to me also demonstrate that the people last year, 2022, found it a valuable experience. 
Okay, so we talked about um, some of the things that dealers find the most valuable in coming to AIM Expo. Um, I think one of those is OEMs. Do you have anything to share about with OEMs? Sure, uh, you're absolutely correct. Uh, up there in the top three is OEMs, distributors, and the aftermarket. So on the OEMs, we have, yeah, the show, the show floor is looking good. We have Suzuki coming back. They were with us last year. Uh, they're going to be returning in 2023, as will Triumph, uh, making a return after a hiatus, which is super exciting news. We actually haven't released it yet. There will be a press release about this. Uh, but KTM, Husqvarna, Gas Gas, and MV Agusta will all be on our show floor. So that's super exciting news. Those are a lot of heavy hitter brands. And obviously, there's there's a huge uh, turnout from the European brands coming to AMX Expo in 2023. So we're super excited about that. That's fantastic. Andre, you talked about the top reasons that dealers attend AIM Expo and new products, I think, was in that list. Can you, sure was. What do you have in store for 2023 with new products? Yeah, so new products is a huge reason people come to the show, uh, both dealer and exhibitor. Exhibitors bring out new products. They need to show it to, obviously, the dealer base as well as the media and everyone else in the industry. So what we have done this year, we have a specific part of the show floor that we've called New Product Central. So. Traditionally, at all of our shows, we'd have the new product display showcases. Those will remain in this area, but we're now we're building a stage uh, with cameras and a host where aftermarket companies, OEM companies, any of our exhibitors can apply to do a new product presentation with our host on the stage. And they'll get a specific time slot. We will obviously then send that out to the media as well as all of our attending dealers and industry professionals so that if they see something that takes their fancy, a new product that looks cool, they can come on down, watch the show, um, and hear all about this new products. And like I said, it gives the dealers the opportunity to hear about new products in one place, but it also gives our exhibitors the opportunity to show their new products in one place. Um, and yeah, like I mentioned, we're gonna have a camera crew there to film this all so that the content creation side of it can be used on an ongoing basis for the rest of the year. That's fantastic. Yeah. And Cinnamon, if people wanted to submit their product or wanna be part of the new product pavilion, how do they do that? So. The application's online at amexpousa.com. Uh, and then, you know, the other thing I'd want to add is from the media perspective, and this will be something that you'll find near and dear to your heart, uh, we'll also be building out a media center. So there's a place where they can go with the workstations, upload content, and really start sharing that story. And that's one of the things that we had. Um, it was a component of Amexpo when the show first launched. Um, and then as the show evolved, um, that had kind of gone away. And as we continue to hear from our exhibitors, as we hear from our dealers, new products still remain one of the um, main reasons they want to come to the show. So we want to make it easy again for the exhibitors and then for them to be able, as you talk about, to take that recorded content away. We want to give them the tools to really help their business, not just at the show, but throughout the year. That's great. That's a great way to not only feature them, but then also um, give them assets that they can use thereafter, really exactly. adding, continuing to add value throughout the year for them. For sure. Amex for 2023 sounds really exciting. I can't wait to attend myself. Um, before we move on to market expansion, do you have anything else um, you'd like people to know? Well, yeah, there'll be a lot of information coming out over the next few weeks as we get closer and closer to the show. But for now, if you are an aftermarket company, OEM company, or any kind of accessory company, and you're not yet an exhibitor, hit amexpousa.com. You can request a booth quote in there for the dealers. Hit the dealer registration. Be sure to get your registration in and come down to the show. And yeah, we'll keep you filled in as things progress closer to the show. Cinnamon, did I miss anything? No, I think you covered it all. Perfect. For anyone who perhaps hasn't registered yet, um, what are the dates of the show? So it'll be February 15th through 17th in Las Vegas. We're at the convention center and we will see you there because you need to be there. The countdown begins to AIM Expo 2023.
Switching gears to market expansion. You just completed the second year of the Ride With Us program. Um, for those who may not be as familiar uh, as we are, let's start with the mission. Okay, so Ride With Us was launched last year. Uh, as you touched on, it's MIC's market expansion program for the industry. Um, and our so our mission is to inspire people to ride. It's to help minimize the barriers to entry and to really create an encouraging and inclusive community, which will ultimately result in more riders riding more. And I think the one thing I'd want to note about that mission statement is that it's really about the people. And I talked about this last year at AIM Expo, and you'll hear me continue to talk about it probably till I just run out of breath. Um, it is about the community, it's about the lifestyle, it's about the joy that riding can bring to your life. And the machines absolutely help us do all of that. But again, it's about the person and connecting with them and less about the machines. They are just simply a tool to help achieve all those great things. I think everyone in the industry is really excited about the prospect of inspiring those and, and getting them integrated into the community and getting ultimately more riders riding more. But when you break that down, what are you gonna how do you achieve that? That that is the million dollar question that we try to answer. You know, we ask ourselves, we ask non-riders, we ask every day, how do we do that? Um, and it starts with inspiration, right? So we uh, worked with a consultant group several years ago, and they define, you know, basically the journey for us of inspire, explore, engage, and integrate. And so. You know, when you look at inspiring and you're at the top of the funnel, you know, one of our key objectives is to really create that inspiration. And I think that um, is one of the biggest efforts that we've worked on this year. Our industry, uh, you guys hear me say this all the time, we are not in the plumbing industry, we are in the power sports industry. Um, we have incredible resources and assets at our disposal. Andre and I, this past summer, spent an incredible amount of time uh, working with the OEs, uh, and pulling together video assets to really start building those inspirational videos. Um, and we're happy to show you one of them right now. What does a motorcycle rider look like? Exactly like you. So live life on your terms. It's your story. Make it worth telling. Lose the status quo and find your freedom. Ride with us at ridewithus.com. You're one of us. You just don't know it yet. So that video was built off the back of a lengthy study that Cinnamon mentioned uh, with a consultant group. And as she mentioned, the four stages of ridership is inspire, explore, engage, and integrate. Now that sounds pretty simple, right? We're just going to inspire people and they're going to get on motorcycles. But obviously it's a lot more sophisticated than that. There's there's a lot going on. And as this report showed us that there isn't one particular kind of person that is a motorcyclist. So in the video you just saw, there's all different kinds of groups of people from all different kinds of ages riding all different kinds of motorcycles in all different kinds of places, because we've got this massive job of inspiring not one particular group of people, but pretty much everyone. And that's a good thing because we don't have to focus our efforts in a place on a kind of person. We know that anyone out there is a potential motorcyclist. So the video you just saw is driven towards that goal of inspiring anyone and everyone to join us and be part of an inclusive motorcycle community. And I think that's right, because at the end of the day, when your inspiration is great enough, the barriers to entry simply become steps Absolutely. of the journey. I have been fortunate enough to see quite a few moto intros um, at some of the shows that you've done. And I've seen firsthand um, the excitement that people feel and the sense of accomplishment when they get off the bike for their, uh, their first ride. Um, and I love the potential that this industry has. Really, it could be anybody. Um, we're speaking to anyone and everyone. You can, you can come and join us and be part of the community. Um, when you think about those moto intros, for those who aren't fortunate like I am um, and who haven't been there to see people, um, what is a moto intro and what do you think the real power is? So moto intros, they're, we basically change lives 30 minutes at a time. So um, people come, they are nervous, they're not sure, they're not confident, 
uh, they've heard about motorcycles, they've seen them, a friend might have one and they've always wanted to try it. And we give them the environment. We work with MSF certified coaches. Uh, we have a closed off area. So in the safest way possible, we give them a first ride experience. We have all the gear, uh, the protection, the right, like I said, the MSF coaches, and we really take them through that first ride experience and hopefully, you know, ignite that passion that we already have. Now, I got to add that going to these events is one of the coolest things I've ever done. I agree. Because like you said, you've been there, you felt the emotion as of you, but kicking back to our Centauric report where we obviously delved into the minds of potential motorcyclists, the one major thing that came out from that, and it's a term a lot of people might have heard already if you've been listening to any of the symposium content, was personal sovereignty. And we can dig into what that means, but essentially it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. Personal sovereignty. And as Cinnamon mentioned, these people come to us going, what is this? Can I really get on a motorcycle? Will I be doing this in 20 minutes, 30 minutes? The answer is yes. And when they get off, they are beaming with personal sovereignty. You can see it, you can feel it, and you can hear it through their reactions. It's super cool. So doing these moto intro experiences has shown us that we are absolutely on the right path to gaining more riders through getting people onto these bikes and putting them through a process that eliminates the barriers because we provide all the gear, we provide everything. It eliminates some of the nerves they might feel because the, the coaches we use from the Motorcycle Safety Foundation have gone through a little bit of preparation work in to deliver this course in a way that it's just super friendly, super easygoing and not a high pressure environment at all. So like Cinnamon said, we're changing lives 30 minutes at a time. I actually believe that because I've seen it and it's awesome. I know we're going to continue to do them and I hope we find a way to scale this up on a massive level because, yeah, I believe it's it's an incredibly valuable program. Well, and so along those lines, two things I want to touch on. First, from the scalability perspective, yes, that is something that um, is actually a priority of us for 2023 is to figure out how to scale it because, yes, our team can go around to different events. We just came from SEMA, which was probably one of the most successful events that we've had. Um, so that's a priority for 23 is figuring out how to scale this, how to bring this you know, to the community. How do we go from doing 10 events a year and touching you know, 700 people to 100 events a year and touching thousands of people? And part of that will be working with our dealers. It'll be working with MSF schools um, and looking at just what other opportunities exist. And then the other thing I want to touch on is when you talk about this environment that we create, you know, it really is. You know, within Power Sports, we talk about one of our objectives to support our mission statement is to really create this welcoming and inclusive community. And a lot of the people that approach us, again, they don't know what to expect and they find out, you know what, we don't bite. We're not scary. <laughs> and, you know, there, there's a lot of stigmas that have existed in the past towards our industry and towards riders. And that's one of the things that we work really hard to break down. And, you know, whether it's one person at a time, whether it's a group of people, that's something that we will continue to do is to really educate people who we are. You know, and as you saw in the video, we talk about what does a motorcycle rider look like exactly like you. What I love about some of these moto intros that I've been to is not just the person coming off the bike is their joy and, and their sense of personal sovereignty is infectious. Um, but what really like tugs at your heartstrings is the community that they came there with. So their significant other, their friend group, their friend that they that they rode the bikes with, um, like that joy that in within their own community. Um, that they share really is something um, special. Is there is there a way to capitalize on that emotion, on that, on their own sense of community to bring them uh, into our community? So I think that was one of the things we saw at SEMA, and uh, I call that ambassadorship, right? So we are all ambassadors and stewards of power sports, and most people I know want to tell everyone how great riding it is, how great riding is, and you should do it. Um, and so that is something that we'll look at. Our priorities for you know the rest of the year and through 23 is to really build a robust website where we have the tools so that once we get people interested in the sport, once we get them inspired, when they're at the point where they want to explore, they have a place to go do that with all the tools. Um, so it is in our future, you know, long-term vision to create an ambassador program. I don't know exactly what that looks like, um, but our ambassadors are truly are the, the best marketing tool we have out there. So we have to find a way to capitalize on that and we will. 
And I think every single one of those people that come off of those bikes has become an ambassador. They might not be completely through their, their journey to being a motorcycle motorcyclist yet, but one person of a family goes on a motorcycle intro experience and then they go home or they go back to the people when it's done and tell them, hey, that wasn't scary. That was super cool. This is how it went down. And yeah, that, the exponentially that will just grow. So yeah, not only are we the ambassadors for those people coming in, they leave an ambassador as well. So yeah, the opportunity to just grow it is endless. Seeing the Moto Intros firsthand is a very inspirational uh, experience. But when you dig into the numbers about who's participating, it tells an even more compelling story. It does. You're 100% right. So the industry's average rider is a 50 year old male. And one of the things we've seen with the Moto Intros is that the average age of the rider is 35 years old, which is impressive. And then on top of that, it's been about 50% female. And when we were at SEMA last week, um, the, the male-female ratio was about the same, but the average age of the rider was down to 28. So it's exciting to see those numbers start trending lower, which ultimately we hope will translate into our industry's average as a whole changing. Right, because then we get, we get younger people in buying more bikes over their lifetime. Yes, exactly. Yes more riders riding more. Sure, and I think it also shows the curiosity of that age group and that um, gender split. It's there. We just haven't removed enough barriers to push them all the way through to becoming a motorcyclist yet, which I guess this is what this program is doing. I think another great thing that this program does and it affords the opportunity is media opportunities. So there are quite a few um, earned media stories that we've been able to secure because the experience is so great. And um, I know at SEMA a couple of weeks ago, you had some very early mornings um, doing interviews with ABC, CBS, and NBC, um, getting those reporters in some cases on bikes um, to have them to have them try themselves. Well, and I think to actually, so Moto Intros at SEMA was a first. We brought two wheels to a four wheel show, um, which really was interesting to the media. So from that element they we were one of the most requested <laughs> activations um, that they wanted to take advantage of and so to be able to get that type of coverage is i mean that's priceless and invaluable for our industry and it's all positive because that's the one thing that we always want to make sure is that that coverage is positive and it's a positive experience um so be to be able to plug that in to again a four-wheel focus and kind of steal the stage was, um, I would definitely call that a win. <laughs> definitely a win. And some great coverage resulted from that. Absolutely. Ride With Us, the program has a different look, a different feel than a lot of things out there that Power Sports has, has done to date. Um, can you talk a little bit about the, cre the creative process, what went into it, how you came to the look and feel of Ride With Us? For sure, that's a subject very near and dear to my heart. Um, I think Andre would agree. We both worked very hard on coming up with what this should be. Um, and, you know, interestingly, we did run into a little bit of uh, resistance and people that question it because it is very, it's simple, right? It's ride with us and it's a smile. And I have talked about this before, but I do always think it bears repeating because we are welcoming people. And, you know, what is that universal symbol of welcome? Come join us. Come be one of us. Come hang out with us. And we're just we're having a good time. And to me, that's that smile. And I think, you know, when Andre and I talked about this, one of the things I think, almost you know, most of us can relate to is when you have that great ride, when you have you know, whatever that is, and you just have that smile in your helmet and nobody else can see it, but you can feel your little cheeks pressing against the helmet pads. And it's just this smile that starts in your soul. And so for us to be able to make that part of our logo and hopefully people can see it and relate to it. Um, and again, if I don't ride, I don't know what a piston is. A tire doesn't necessarily mean anything to me, but no matter what kind of day I'm having, no matter what I'm doing, if I see a smile, even if I don't want to, I'm going to smile a little bit. And so that's what that's what Ride With Us is all about. It's, again, inclusive, community, welcoming. Join us. We want you to be part of us. And it also takes the emphasis off of the motorcycle, the machine itself, and puts it on the people. And that's the part 
we know that people drive motorcycling, not the other way around. So yeah, that's that's where the smile comes from. So for 2023, what do you have in store? Uh, so for 23, we will continue to really focus on our mission, which again is to build that inspiration, to inspire people to want to join our community uh, and to develop those resources. Because again, we do need a place for people to go that is welcoming, gives them the tools of what they need to navigate becoming a rider because it sounds easy, like we've all done it, but it is actually not as easy as it sounds. So we really wanna help people on that journey uh, and just really stay true to the brand, the Ride With Us brand and who we are. Sure, and I think that brand itself is so super important. We've done everything we can to make the brand about being fun, about being encouraging, about being inclusive and showing that the barriers to entry aren't there if you can inspire people enough and show them this picture, like the true essence of motorcycling is, is pretty much fun. So we've created another video, um, which you're about to see. It's going to be part of our social media campaign. And again, it's supposed to be thrown out there to be energetic, inspirational, and show people that, oh yeah, this is super fun. I want to go do this. And anyone like me can go and do it. So check it out, enjoy. And if you need any more information, hit us up at ridewithus.com or you can email us at hello at ridewithus.com. That concludes today's episode. Many thanks to Cinnamon, Andre, and Jacqueline for a great update. We are grateful to DX1 for being a sponsor. Visit dx1app.com today. And a big thank you to ZDMS for being a sponsor. Stop by zdms.com today. Thank you for joining us, everyone. See you next time.